on, die! Oh no, he's dead. What happened? I don't know. What happened here? I sent him oysters, he ate them, and then he's dead. I'm Ellie, a mysterious death detective. I'm Alex, a reporter for WABC. Let's get this story in the headlines. You know, 95% of all seafood-related illnesses are caused by Vibrio. What's Vibrio? But, but it usually takes several days. Vibrio is a deadly disease that naturally lives in the same seawater as clams and oysters. You can't get it from the food, right? Oh, yes, you can. It's really dangerous if oysters or clams are improperly stored or prepared, or if you aren't healthy enough to fight off the infection. Aww. Well, there's nothing more we can do for him, but let's make sure this never happens again. Let's call on all the usual suspects. The chef, witches, trucker, dog workers, and the fishermen. So, chef, how'd you cook the oysters? I don't know. Like, I always do, I guess. Here's a VDH butcher that can help you cook more safely. Oh, I didn't know after three four minutes after you open the shellfish. You, you must boil the shellfish. Sure I can. There are rules about shipping oysters called the regulations pertaining to restrictions on shellfish. They're from the Virginia Marine Resources Commission. The VMRC made sure I knew all about them before I started this job. First, on long trips, my truck must be mechanically refrigerated or the oysters must be completely covered in ice. The trucking container must have a permit from the Virginia Department of Health. Well, it looks like your truck meets these regulations even though it's in the sun. Clock workers, major oysters you loaded and unloaded caused the death. How could our oysters have caused this? Vibrio may contaminate the oysters you loaded and unloaded. What if our dock is carefully sanitized every day? Vibrio is naturally occurring. The oysters already have it when they come out of the water. But it's really important to make sure Vibrio isn't allowed to multiply after harvest. So do the oysters have a chance to sit on the sun and warm up? I guess so. How long? Uh, about three hours. The truck driver couldn't get here in time. That's not our fault. You could have shaded the oysters, or even better, covered them in ice, or refrigerated them from the time they left the water until they get got to their destination, even during the lakes. That's good information. Let's go tell us about this. Fishermen, we think your oysters might have had vibrio. Hmm, that's bad. Why do you think so? We're trying to figure out. When did you harvest this oyster? I didn't write down the time. Well, it's really important to keep track of that time of day. Regulations show that depending on the season and temperature, you can only harvest during early morning. The shellfish and the shellfish must be mechanically refrigerated or completely covered in ice right away. And there's more. Here, you can have a copy of the regulations. They're kind of confusing. Hey, at least I have my permit. Well, if other people are eating your food, you need to be careful and follow the rules. If you don't, you have to destroy that day's harvest and you can permit when you lose your permit. I think I figured it out. Alex from WABC News with this update on Vibrio death on the Eastern Shore. Detective Ellie has solved the case. It's not my fault. It's the Vibrio. I can't help it. No, it seems like it was everyone's fault. The fisherman wasn't paying attention to harvesting in the right times of day. The dock workers let the shellfish stay out in the sun for hours and hours. The trucker was having a hard time maintaining a safe temperature during shipping, and the trucker and the cook didn't know how to tell whether the shellfish were fully cooked. And all these things, the Vibrio were allowed to multiply until it was deadly to our victim. The Waffle Bots are developing a solution that may help with all of these problems. First, they are educating people about Vibrio, but they have also found a group of scientists who have developed an intelligent ink monitor. This is a labeling system that shows how the frozen or chilled product has, has been preserved by using colors as indicators. A symbol can be printed or stamped on a label or on a packaging line. If the temperature goes up, then the color changes. This way, a chef or home cook can know when an item or food is no longer safe to use. Here are some tips for home or restaurant. Get shellfish that are certified Vibrio free if you can. These have been frozen long enough to kill any Vibrio present. Make sure you store your shellfish cold, under 45 degrees Fahrenheit, never at room temperature. Check for signs of unhealthy shellfish. Open shells before cooking or close ones after. Cook thoroughly, reaching an internal, internal temperature of 145 degrees for three minutes. And if you are the one fishing, bring lots of ice. Do you have any questions? How did y'all think I'll stop it? I really did like it. Um, well, we, well, we, um, we're from, well, most of us are from the shore, so we decided.
meant to do something we about it. to do something local. Yeah. There was a concern. <laughs> and also that the uh, fishing industry, um, climbing and fishing industry on the shore is like a big part of the economy. So if any of the rules changed, it would mess it up. Oh. They're expensive to buy, buy some of their rules, so if there's even one more death, they have to change all of the regulations, and that would be really bad to the economy. So, how did you get, I came up with the idea about the color library? Well, um, did you talk to the parents of uh, teachers? Well, um, our, our coach, Ms. Brenner, she decided to look it up. And we it just happened to be there. It's recently been developed. So. By, yeah, a German, by a German, German company. You guys know the name of that German company? No. 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 I don't think so. I don't know. I heard you all referencing a lot of um, uh, sources, your um, the regulatory agencies and stuff. How did you all find out about those? And, um, yeah, did y'all actually talk to them in person or just over the internet? Or? We talked personally to some of them, and we found out about them because on the eastern shore, since there's lots of shell shellfish, it's kind of hard to not know <laughs> your next door neighbor. And we're so. a small community, so we know each other. <laughs> In y'all skit, I saw y'all um, talking to the chef and the, um, the truck driver and the uh, you know, oyster. Have y'all gone out in your community to, um, to talk about this among other, like for real? Or is this yes. Nice? We have gone, just I think it's a couple nights ago, we went to a local church and we invited whoever wanted to come and we showed our skit and our presentation. How did that go? I think it went pretty well. Yeah, pretty well. Yeah, also one expert was there, Randy Widgeon. Yeah. Randy, Randy, Randy Widgeon, what was his uh, expertise in? It was the VMRC, Virginia Marine Resources Commission. Mm, that's not it. No, it was the selfish <laughs> Yeah, uh, this this question, you guys, would you guys know of uh, anybody this has affected affected uh, lately in the news or in your culture? I guess. It it happened a few years ago. I don't really remember what the guy's name was, but it uh -huh. did. Yeah, yeah like 1999. 12 people got um, killed by their food, and then 2008, 30 got killed. No, it's 30. Um, no, it does a good job of killing people. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any ideas about any other solution except for the food library? Educating people. That's yeah. probably the biggest thing. It's people's German, choice. The yes. German company, they're um, coming up with the thing that tells the people or restaurants if it's like the it's video free or not for free. Because you can easily tell if the um, temperature goes up, it, it turns red, and if it goes down, it turns green. The main thing is just educating people because it's people's choice if they want to eat it raw. Yeah. And lots of people like to do that, and that can be dangerous. <laughs> Another solution besides cooking it, you can also freeze it for 12 weeks under 30 degrees and just frostbite it. Is that the only other way to keep it safe if they are going to eat it raw? The snow? Freeze it for 12 weeks. 
And um, did y'all find out about any practical testing they can do to find out if it is on there? Um, um, that are just the expert we talked to, he um, he did test the water around oyster beds because it's it's in the water. It occurs in the water, but not the oyster. But if they filter the water, they can get inside of them, and it does not hurt the oyster. It does not have any signs of vibria. Does it only occur in oysters from this area, like the water from this area? Um, it can occur anywhere where red tide is from, like where red tide or algae blooms. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it's also it, naturally occurring. It, when it, it's most, it's in the water when it's hotter. It's stronger. All right. All right. Yeah, thank y'all for um, for the presentation. Very entertaining. How much time was there? Don't get. Pardon me. How much time was there? Ten minutes. Y'all are perfect on the schedule. Ten minutes. Y'all are about uh, fifteen seconds under to five minutes on the schedule. Y'all are excellent. <laughs> Very entertaining. Thank you.